I'll start that over because I'm not going to say relative 14 times. <clears throat> You're always talking about your relative. I know. I'm very proud of my relative. Hey, this is David with Haggerty at Redline Rebuilds. Today I'm going through and I'm assembling my small black cylinder heads. They're all machined, they're painted, they look gorgeous, but before I go through and just shovel parts into them and hoping for the best, I'm gonna go through and measure all the dimensions that create that perfect scenario, meaning I have enough spring load to hold the valve, I should say, so I can hold the valve in place, right? And also keep the uh, lifter against the camshaft. So you can have too much spring, you can have too little spring, and of course there's all sorts of stuff in between. All right, so now for this build, we're going to use a custom grind from Delta camshafts, it's a hydraulic roller. Now, you might be asking, what's the difference between a flat tab of camshaft and a hydraulic roller? It all sounds the same. On your right hand side is the stock camshaft. So you can see, and this is a flat tap it. So as you look at this lobe, you can see it's a little more pointy on the end. And then a roller camshaft is a larger radius on this part of the cam. The advantage is, how long the valve stays open, so that duration of time. Now, from a flat tappet, this being, some call them tappets, this is the lifter, and theoretically this is dead flat across the top. This is starting to show a fair amount of wear, and if you can see it, there's actually, it's concave. The difference between this and this, these are retro lifters, roller lifters for the roller camshaft, and it literally has a roller on the bottom side. So as it goes up and down through its motion, it can do a faster ramp rate coming up and down than what this flat tappet can. And then of course, because you can't have these turning into the cylinder, you know, uh, normally lifters spin, you do not want them rolling because if this thing spins this way, then your roller doesn't roll anymore. It digs into the cam. That's why there's a tie bar to keep these from rotating. When you're using a flat tap of camshaft, your lifter requires less spring pressure to keep it against this lobe because it doesn't have as much ramp rate. Now, when you get over to the roller cam, it requires more spring pressure because your ramp rate here is larger and to keep it in contact as it comes up over the lobe and down off of it, you need more, that increased pressure. And then this cam core is also designed for that higher load. So first thing, I'm gonna put my valve in, up through the guide and hit the hole. Of course, I had a little bit of lube on there so it doesn't uh, scratch up the guide. Put my retainer on and then hopefully throw these guides or throw the keepers across the room four or five times. Okay, there we go. We are at <clears throat> one inch, seven, not quite 700. Ken recommends on this camshaft, um, somewhere the count numbers would be somewhere around 132 to 293. So 132 pounds at the seat. Um, he said we can get away with about 125 uh, with this lift and of course with these springs. This dimension is affected by not only the valve contact point, right, from here and then to where this groove is at, so then you have your variation also with your keepers and variation with your retainer, not to mention the pocket height in the casting and the seat height in the casting as well. Granted, all that's machined, but there's variation that all stacks up. So you take that out by adding shims wherever you may need to to get your number where you want it. So what that brings me to is over here on the spring tester, I'm gonna take my spring now, set it in the tester. It has a gauge dimension. So basically you're gonna set this to that same height that's on your um, installed height. And then you have your load. Okay, so at this exact height with no shim, I'm at 120. So I could bring it up, just to tighten it up just a little bit. So what if I put in a 15,000 shim That'll put me closer to uh, one or one inch 755. So then I just come over here and go to one inch 755. And that puts me at 125. So for this pocket, I'm gonna add 
a 15,000 shim underneath the spring when I go to install it. I'll hang it right there. Now I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna do that for each uh, valve and then subsequently have to do it also with the other head because they're both machined heads from GM. There's variation between the two. Okay, so we went through and I measured out the springs, pockets, we know what they're going to install at. And oddly enough, Ben's actually assembling those heads. I might have to redo that, but don't tell him. So I come out here to the main part of the shop and John and I are gonna install the cam bearings. Now, cam bearings are pretty simple, but my rockauto.com tip of the day is there is a hole for oiling in, the, in this particular setup. So on a small black Chevy, there's a groove into the block and then you position this hole and there's always, where's the best spot? Well, I've found that the best spot is um, at the two o'clock position when the block is upright, eight o'clock in this position. And there's a whole thing about how the oil gets pushed in and so on and so forth. And everybody has their discussion about where the best spot is. This is where I've always put them. This is where the general consensus is at. Um, obviously there's a groove in this and it's going to get oil, but there certainly should be a better position. So I found that better position is again at the two o'clock position. And since I'll use this as an example. So since I want to put this at the two o'clock position, up right eight o'clock now I want to have a mark that shows me where 12 o'clock is and there's a good reason for this because as I push this bearing in I'm gonna do my best to line up this mark into this hole that tells me I didn't do this not that I can't see the hole but it definitely gives me a nice guideline pretty simple Sledgehammer, cam tool. All right, so we finished up putting all the cam bearings in, and then I put the block back on the engine stand. At that point, I went through and put in my uh, oil passage plugs, and of course, then my freeze plugs, or if you so desire, core plugs. So this side of the block is ready for the rest of the assembly, specifically the crankshaft, but we got everything set up over here to finish up this cylinder head. So I need to go through and finish this up, reassemble everything. And uh, at that, that's gonna be the end of my day. So uh, you know the drill, get out in the shop, get your work done, because quite honestly, otherwise your projects are just collecting dust. See ya.